put the you put the tripod inside the chair. How many want it straight?
I don't think we're going to be able to get this back up without having to unplug everything. So, that's just going to stay on the ground. There we go. I can go back in the ground. Right, there's nothing in the way of the camera, and it's great. How's your screen? Yes,
ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Breaking High School's Gymnasium for tonight's game featuring the Lady Buffaloes from Garden City High School and your Lady Panthers. Breaking High School Athletic Department would like to thank you for supporting the Panthers tonight through your attendance. We appreciate your encouragement and support of our players, coaches, and officials. For the safety of all fans, we expect all students and spectators to sit at the bleachers and watch the game. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, please stand if you are able, remove your hats, and place your hand over your heart and join the Panther Jazz Band under the direction of Mr. Grant Matthews and Mr. Don Regeer as we honor America and all of our veterans and military personnel serving around the world with the National Anthem. Now, ladies and gentlemen, your starting lineup for Garden City, number three, Myra Martinez. And for your Great Bear Panthers, at guard, a senior, number three, Paige. Next 
Boston! For Garden City, number four, Katie Brown. And for the Panthers, at guard, number 10, Mercedes Gray! For Garden City, number five, Camden Carr. And for the Panthers, at guard, number 14, Julie and for Garden City, number 12, KJ Pinchon. And for the Panthers, number 32 at post, Emily Hall. And for Garden City, number 22, Maya Court. And for the Panthers, Number 34, a forward, Mackenzie Trainer. Head coaches for Garden City, Jacob Miller, and for the Panthers, Cindy Beck. Your officials for tonight's game, Lance Ferguson, Justin Schoonover, and Eric Geisinger. Rebound, one assist, and two steals. Then Emily Hall down low, 10 points per game, six rebounds. Emily coming off of a game where she dished out four assists, or excuse me, got pulled down four rebounds on the deep offensive end. Kenzie Premer rounding out the starting lineup for Great Bend, coming off of a career-high 17-point game where she also was able to snag a seven steals and deflect four passes. As we get ready for the opening tip-off, I'd like to remind everyone that the opening possession is brought to you by Barton Community College. Garden City will have you explore your future at Barton. Heading into their offensive end, it's in the hands of Mariah Martinez. Martinez has it driving to the left side. She'll pull up from the left high post. Shot is in the air and it goes down. It's a quick two points for Garden as they'll have things rolling. Great Ben now has it going the other way on the left side. It's Julian Reimer dribbling to the top. She'll set up the offense. Moved on to the left side with Kenzie Premer, who now swings the pass to the right. It's Sadie Spray down low. Emily Hall gets going early Emily. off the baseline. Oh. And now Panther full court press as Garden able to get it in. Core finds Carr. Carr now goes back to the course. Or excuse me, that's Martinez as she's trying to get across half court on the far side. Spray and Premer forced the 10 second right before she got it across. Can you get the call? Making it hard. Panthers already get the, their first forced turnover of the ball game. As Julian Reimer now has it at half court, she'll move it to Kenzie Premer on the left side. Spray now with it on the right wing, down low to Hall. Hall on the left side, Reimer, Reimer over to Sadie. No good on the right wing three. Reimer, or excuse me, Thexton gets the offensive board. Gets it out to Spray. Sadie standing on the Panther head at half court. Puts the ball in the left hand and directs traffic. Sends a pass to the right side where Premer has it. Premier swings it back to the top where Sadie moves on the left side with Reimer. Reimer onto the charity stripe with Hall. Hall down low to Thex and her shot blocked by Pynchon. Buffalo's to have it going the other way. Hall nearly steals that half court. Instead, Pynchon moves it across the midcourt line. She'll dribble it onto the right side. Hands it off to Korf. Korf swings the pass to the left. It's with Carr dribbling into the paint. She'll move past the baseline. Martinez has it guarded by Spray. She'll dribble it to the top or to the front of the rim. Now bounces it off to Pynchon, driving to the rim, tries to get out of the pass, and the Panthers come away with it. Pynchon, a little slow to get up, however, on the other end. Paige Thexton down low, can't get the shot to go, but she'll be headed to the line. Pynchon with a knee brace on the left knee. Gave it a quick adjust. It'll be Paige and Thexton at the line. The foul against Garden City going against Maya Korf. Thexton's First shot is up and good. Page now 6 of 14 on the year. Second shot up and on the way. That one money as well. So a 4 to 2 lead for Great Ben. The Lady Panthers 6 18 still to play in the opening frame. Going to be 
tipped out of bounds as Garden City got it in on the inbounds to Camden Carr. City Spray knocking it out in front of the Garden bench. Pension going to be thrown in, guarded by Kenzie Premer on the sideline. She'll find Carr. Carr being guarded by Reimer has it nearly poked away. Instead, able to regain her handle, moves across half court where she's picked off by Sadie. Premer gets it out of half court, goes to the other end, right side shot. No good, goes over Reimer with the offensive board. She can't get it either. Premer gets it on the other side. As Jillian Reimer and Kenzie Premer both coming down with offensive boards, neither able to convert it into second chance points. However, will go out of bounds. Last touch by Garden City. Panthers possession. Premier throws it in. It's all off the right block. Another quick one for Emily Hall as that's four points. 6-2 to two lead for Great Ben. 5.50 to go in quarter number one. Pynchon has it moving towards the midcourt line. She'll be picked up by Sadie Spray. Pynchon puts it over her head. Needs to find somewhere to go with it. She'll find Haley Brown. Brown has it near half court. Now sends a pass onto the right wing. Korf nearly loses on the sideline. Instead, sends it to the left. Martinez has it stripped by Spray. Sadie taking it on the offensive end. There's a foul. It'll be a blocking call there. Sadie drove left side of the lane, forced the decision on Haley Brown. Either let her get an easy look at the rim or take the foul. She decided to make Sadie earn it at the line. We'll see what spray it has. Shot in the right hand on the way. Good that time. Yeah, Sadie's been pretty consistent so far from the line, hitting on about 67% of her shots there, two of three when she gets to the charity stripe. Second one now gives it two bounces up and on the way. That one good as well. Panthers lead 8-2. to two, Five and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. Inbounds pass near half court. That'll be lost by Myra Martinez on the far sideline in front of the Panthers student section. The entirety of the Panther Fieldhouse filling out nicely here for the ladies game on homecoming night. Expect that'll only progress further as the night goes on. Panthers get the inbound in. It's Mackenzie Premer, top of the key. She now goes down low. It's Emily Hall off the right block. Turn around, Jay, no good. Rebound pulled in by Kenzie Premer. Her second chance points. Rattles around the rim before falling in. Panthers getting a lot of offensive boards here. Last time, Premer and Reimer each getting one. Not able to turn it to points. Near half court. Paige Thexton swats a pass out of bounds from Camden Carr. He'll stay in possession of Garden City. Almost looked like a volleyball play. Paige went up there and blocked it out of bounds, disrupted the offense. Still Buffalo's ball as Martinez has it across half court. She'll be picked up by Spray, moving to her left, finding the screen. He'll switch to Premer. Stolen by Reimer as she drives on the left side. Reimer at half court. Able to get to Premer on the right side. She advances it further along the perimeter to Spray. Spray trying to find Reimer in the left high post. They'll find Paige Thexton outside the perimeter on the left side. She moves it to Spray. Top the key three. Good from Sadie. Oh, just a two. Just a two. Long one there, but... Still a 12-2 lead for Gray Bend. is out to an incredibly quick start. Four and a half minutes still to play in quarter number one. Substitution as Pinchon checks back in. And throwing the inbounds pass will get in the car. Car now moves it across half court to Mark McDonald. Freshly checked in for Garden City. She'll give it to Pinchon at the top, driving to the left side. She'll try to establish herself in the mid or in the high play post and instead pass it off to Kaylee McDonald who will get called for the travel. Shuffled her feet as she was trying to get away from some prickly Panther defense. Instead, possession goes over to Great Bend. Sadie Spray has it on the right side near half court. She was into the high post to Hall. Hall going down low to the text and ball will be, it'll be a foul that time of going against Alexis Viegas. It will be, or will not be a shooting foul. It'll be on the floor as we see substitution for Great Bend. Julian Reimer subs out. Alyssa McCulley on in the floor now. The inbounds pass comes from the left side below the basket. It's Emily Hall 
on the mid lane. No good on the jumper. Gets her own board but loses it. Coming away, it's Viegas for Garden City. She'll be picked up at half court by Hall now. Dribbles to the right side, trying to find space with it. Moves into the corner. It's a three. That time knocked down, courtesy of Thaley Powers. Cuts the Great Bend 10 to 0 run, or it quits a Great Bend 10 to 0 run as Panthers lead 12 to 5. Had been 2 to 2 at one point before Panthers took control here in the mid stretch of this sec or of this first quarter. Now a turnover for a Great Bend on the other end will give Garden City back the ball in front of their own bench. Inbounds pass finds Powers. Powers goes down low. No good for McDonald's off the right block hook shot. Spray has it moved in transition. Sadie on the right wing. She'll pull back to the top of the key. Moves it into Hall in the right high post. Hall trying to find Creamer on the left block. Instead batted away where Thexton comes away with it. And a jump ball forced as Paige had just managed to clear it for or right after the jump ball called. Thexton will be a subbed out as Denver Ringo steps onto the court for the first time tonight. A inbounds pass. Garden City goes out of bounds from the baseline to the sideline. So Panthers going to take over in their offensive end. Premier finds Hall on the left perimeter. She moves it to McCulley up top. Cully onto the right wing with Spray. Spray to the right high post with Hall. Emily shot no good. Bounce around by Ringo before Garden City McDonald able to come away with it. Three minutes to go in the first quarter. Panthers lead 12 to 5. Viegas has it just in front of the Panther bench. She'll be moving onto the right wing. Oh, Emily wow. Hall being called for the foul. Garden City moving from left to right as you sit at the Panther broadcast table. Throwing it in for the Buffaloes, it's Viegas. She'll get in up top, finds Powers dribbling to the left side. She tries to hand it off to Carr instead batted away but Carr is able to come away with it at half court spray nearly gets the steal instead ball in the hands of Viegas at the top of the key dribbling to her left working against Hall she'll have a pass batted away by Premier but Pynchon finds it drives into the paint loses the handle but able to recover it outside the perimeter now moves a pass on the right side it's Carr into the corner she finds McDonald McDonald dribbles in puts the floater up doesn't find anything that time as the last touched by Garden City was Kenzie Premer and Kaylee McDonald wrestling for the rebound. And 2.15 to go in quarter number one. Great Bend leads 12 to 5. Spray trying to make the entry pass into Ringo. It'll go out of bounds as didn't cleanly get there. Pinching providing the tough defense. Throwing it in now. Garden City has it on their baseline. They'll find it to Martinez. Or excuse me, that's Carr. Carr now goes back to Pynchon near the baseline. Pynchon will dribble to the right side, moves across half court to Powers. Powers trying to find a pass down low to Viegas. Soars over her head and goes out of bounds on the baseline. It's a, another turnover against Garden City as Great Bend throws it in from the baseline. Two minutes remaining in quarter number one. City Spray with the ball on the left side, moves it to the top of the key. McCulley, McCulley on the right, win with Premier. Premier down low to Ringo. Ringo into the right high post with Hall. Hall on the left side, three from Spray. No good as it rims out. Premier gets the offensive board. Outside now to Hall. Hall down low to Spray. Spray pump fakes once and gets the layup to go. Sadie says if I can't get it outside, I'll just drive in. The two foot shots easier anyway. Panthers back up with a nine point lead. 14 to five, one and a half to play in quarter number one. Powers on the right side, moves into the corner with McDonald. Her three, no good off top of the backboard. Offensive rebound goes to Viegas. Viegas has it on the left wing. She'll dribble towards the top of the key. The Panthers not allowing many points as they lead 14 to 5. 110 left to go. Viegas has it on the left wing. She'll dribble inside now to left little block on her by Hall. Puts a scooping shot up. No good as Emily gets the board. Moves it out to half court to spray. Spray driving into the lane. The left side goes up the right hand. No good. Ringo passed the rebound right to Sadie. Denver couldn't pull it in herself, but got the tip to the Panthers. Sadie coming in the left corner. She'll have it poked away and trying to get it back. She'll be the last one to touch it as it goes out of bounds on the sideline. 
under a minute now to play in quarter number one. I want to remind everyone that Panther basketball is brought to you in part by University of Kansas Health Systems, the Great Bend Campus, the Fieldhouse, and by Keller Real Estate and Insurance Company. 52 seconds to play in quarter number one. Great Bend leads 14 to five. However, Garden City inbounding it in their defensive end. They'll now try to move it across half court. Martinez does just that as she'll dribble to the charity stripe before looking for the to move the ball. She moves it on the right wing, finds Maya Korf. Korf takes it to the top of the point, finds Pynchon being guarded by Reimer. Pynchon reverses from left to right, drives on the right side. Can't get the shot to go, but is fouled. She'll be heading to the line. So far, shooting 65% on the season is Pynchon. The foul going against Jillian Reimer. It's just her first, the second Panther foul of the game. Pynchon scoreless up to this point. We'll see if that changes. It does on the first free throw. And so it shrinks into an eight-point Panther lead, 14-6, to 32 seconds to play in the opening quarter. Second shot from Pynchon up and also good. Great bend up as Paige Sexton gets the inbound. She'll swing a pass on the left side with McCulley. Alyssa goes into, into the paint with Ringo. No good on that shot. And Coach Beck yelling that time. She wanted one shot as with only 32 seconds. Kind of... Could have, could have hoped for the one shot. Have to see if the Panthers can't force the turnover before Garden City. Down low's Korf into the right corner, and Panthers get that turnover. McCulley skies into the air and come down to the pass. Spray, 12 seconds, has on the left side, moves it to Thexton on the right. Eight now, back to Sadie, driving to the left block, puts the shot up, no good. Then Ringo with the offensive board, but tips it into KJ Pynchon. Won't be a final shot from Garden as we'll head into the second quarter. Great Bend Panthers lead 14 to 7. Don't go anywhere as we'll have more Panther basketball heading your way on B1043 the point. Powered by Ewan Chevrolet. Together, let's drive. The American Reverses the ball around the perimeter before Jillian Reimer comes away with it. Sends it on the left side. Rackenzie gets it back. It's now on the right side. Sadie Spray. Three. No good. Rebound. Goes long before Korf comes down with, it, down with it for Garden City. Some good ball movement on that possession by Great Bend. However, doesn't come away with a shot. Seven and a half minutes to go in the first half. Great Bend leads 14 to 7. A pass from Korf looking into the left corner. Might have thought one of the Great Bend Lady Panther cheerleaders was uh, on the Garden City Buffaloes team as nearly would have had a pretty wide open look for that young cheerleader but instead of turnover goes in favor of Great Bend. Panthers have it head into their offensive end. Kenzie Primer with it on the right wing up top to Julian Reimer now to the high post to Hall. Hall goes left side to Spray. Spray steps inside the arc no good as it's too long goes off the backboard. As rebound hauled in by Powers. Powers moves it to Pynchon who'll get across half court. Pynchon hands it off now to Camden Carr. Carr driving to the right side, gives it up to Martinez. Martinez three from top of the key, no good. Julian Reimer with the board. Under seven minutes to go in quarter number two. Panthers lead by seven, 14 to seven. Spray has it on the right side. Shows looking for a pass down low. Emily Hall on the left block. Hall can't get the shot to go, but she is fouled. 
I like that. Even though uh, even though Hall didn't get the bucket, she still points to Sadie Spray like she got her the assist. We'll see what Emily has at the line. Emily gives the ball a couple of dribbles and sinks the first one. She's now got five points against Dodge City. Emily put up four, so already past that last game total. Emily did pull down six boards last game, doing a lot on the glass. The second free throw attempt from Hall, no good, but gets her own miss. Goes outside, finds McCulley, top of the key. McCulley on the left wing with Premier. Premier finds Emily in the high post. Emily outside, McCulley. Three is good! A little bit of a deep one there for Alyssa McCulley, and she was probably two, two and a half feet behind the three point line. Doesn't matter. Six and a half minutes to play in the first half. Panthers lead 18 to 7. Down low, it's pinch in, and she'll be fouled on the right side while she makes the shot. So a quick three-pointer from Alyssa McCulley on the offensive end for Gray Ben. We'll see if KJ Pynchon can answer back with a three-point play of her own here at the free-throw line. Made two earlier, and she'll continue that trend here on the third as she sinks it as well. Three of three from the free-throw line is KJ Pynchon. Julian Reimer has the ball at half court. She moved on to the right side with Alyssa McCulley. McCulley puts it over her head before driving to the top of the key. Moving on to the left wing with Kenzie Premer. Premer goes right back to Alyssa, who swings it on the right side with Reimer. Reimer finds Alyssa McCulley up top of the paint, trying to find Paige Dexton down low. Instead, it's picked off by Haley Brown. Pinchin now has it moving across the near side of half court. On the right wing, she'll dribble towards the top of the key. Now guarded by Kenzie Premier. She'll move a pass in the right corner with Martinez. Martinez driving into, the, in, driving into the paint against Hall. Pitches the pass into the right corner. The three no good from Camden Carr. The rebound knocked along where Pynchon comes away with it in the left corner. Pump fakes before driving in and trying to send a pass off the baseline. She was looking for Camden Carr. You could see it in her eye when she was in the corner. She saw a streaking Camden Carr that she was trying to draw the Panther defense in. Let her finish easy. Panther defense, though, didn't buy the fake drive. They were ready for the outlet pass. Get the turnover. 540 to play in the second quarter. Panthers lead 18 to 10. Emily Hall down along the right baseline. No good off near iron. Rebound pulled down by Haley Brown. Brown gets it out to Villegas, who will move it across half court. Picked up by Sadie Spray on the right wing. Taking it now. Towards the top of the key, she'll hand it off. It's with Camden Carr dribbling onto the right side. She'll give it right back to Haley Brown. Brown, Viegas. Brown gives it to Viegas on the left wing, who pops for three. No good as Panthers have it going the other way. And it's Emily Hall on the left wing. She soars a pass onto the right side to Sadie Spray. Spray goes up top to McCulley. McCulley back on the right wing with Spray. Gives it right back to Alyssa. Alyssa now moves it to Kenzie Premer on the left side. Premer up top. McCulley pulls for another three. That one, nothing but net either. When Alyssa McCulley starts feeling it, she can heat up quick. Six points on back-to-back -back three pointers from the Panther sophomore. Now a turnover on the other end for Great Ben. It's Emily Hall finding out the pass to Alyssa McCulley. Alyssa Drives on the left side, looking for Sexton on the right. Instead, it's batted away. Hall comes away with it on the right wing. Gives it to Sadie Spray. Three is good from the left corner. The left wing three, excuse me. Regardless, we'll get a timeout called by head coach Jacob Miller of the Garden City Buffaloes. Panthers lead 24 to 10. Four and a half minutes to play in the first half. Stick around and we'll have more Panther basketball ahead your way right after this on B1043. The point powered by Eva Chevrolet. Together, let's drive. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to get your tickets for the half court shot sponsored by the Rotary Club. There's a correction. The shot is worth $700 tonight. Also, ladies and gentlemen, the Great Bend High School Paw Shop will be open for business. They're located in the Commons area. They'll be open tonight at halftime of the Varsity Girls Basketball game. Half time of the boys game. Lots of Panther merchandise.
pass to McDonald. McDonald looks for the baseline drive, has it stripped away by a combination of Dexton and Spray. Sadie has it at half court, moves it on to the far side with McCulley. Alyssa dribbling into the corner, picks the dribble up and moves it up top to Spray. Spray swings it on to the left side with Dexton. Dexton into the corner finds Premer, who nearly has it tied up by McDonald. Instead, able to muscle it away and move it past to the top of the key where Sadie Spray has it. Onto the right side, it's Alyssa McCulley. Back with Spray at the top. Now on the left, it's Kenzie Premer. Premer assumes the triple threat before moving it up to the top with Spray. Spray goes into the right corner with McCulley, who has it batted away, but it goes out of bounds. That time, a last touch by Haley Brown. Substitution moving in for Great Bend as Paige Thexton will step off. Addie Nicholson will go ahead and get her first minutes in the game. Nicholson coming off of a three-point outing, able to sink a three in that dodge or in that contest against Dodge City as they brief pause in the action to for Kenzie Premer to tie her shoe. We'll remind everyone the Panther River Sports brought to you in part by Equity Bank. We're right here beside you, equitybank.com. Nicholson, three in the far corner. Oh, no good. As the outlet pass stolen by Sadie Spray. Sadie and Premer going in. It's Sadie from the left high post. Nothing but nylon on that time. That's just a hard defense to stop. On the inbounds, Sadie gets it again, goes in the left high post. It's Premer that time. I was just about to say, that's a pretty tough look to stop. And you have Sadie Spray streaking in on one side and Kenzie Premer on the other. You see it on display there. Panthers up 28 10, 3 09 left to play in the second quarter. At half court, Viegas has it, moving it into the right corner. She'll hand it off now to McDonald. McDonald at the charity stripe, gives it to Pinch and nearly loses the handle instead, able to regain it on the right wing. Being guarded by Premier, she'll move to the top of the key. Picks the dribble up, hands it off to Brown, who drives the high post, has it poked away. Oh, Emily Hall trying to get it away, has it stripped there. Viegas coming away with it for Garden City. 2.40 now to play in the first half. Panthers lead 28-10. As down low, no good from Garden City. Alyssa McCulley with the ball finds Sadie Spray in transition. Spray onto the right corner with McCulley. McCulley, or excuse me, with Premier. Premier goes inside with Hall and trying to find Addie Nicholson. It'll go out of bounds. Emily was saying it was tipped by a Garden City player, but the referees will disagree. Buffalo's taken over on the baseline. Emily Hall will. Step off. She'll catch a breather with 2.23 to play in the second quarter. Denver Ringo will step on. Inbounds pass from KJ Pinch and finds Camden Carr. She'll move across half court on the far side. Moves a pass in the left corner with Escobedo. Escobedo moving towards the top of the key. Will swing a pass that way with the le to Viegas. Viegas, ball in the right hand, being guarded by Spray. Now driving towards the baseline. Sends a pass on to the right corner with Haley Brown. Goes too long. Alyssa McCulley. Catches it off the arc and now trying to find Sadie Spray in transition. Can't quite get the pass there. Is Pinch and able to tip it away before Brown picks it off entirely. 150 to play in quarter number two. Great Bend leads 28 to 10. Panthers not allowing a bucket since the first two minutes of this quarter. And an illegal screen. That was on number 14 going against Alexa Escapedo. I just checked into the ball game not too long ago for Garden City. Picks up a quick one. Throwing it in on near sideline. It'll be Kenzie Premier as Kenzie Premier, Alyssa McCulley, and Cindy Beck enjoy a, a nice little chuckle with the referee before throwing the ball in. And McCulley has it up top. Moves it on the right side with Spray. Spray goes back to McCulley at the top of the point. Now goes it, it's Kenzie Premier off the left wing inside to Ringo. Ringo's turnaround jumper. No good. 28 to 10 lead for the Lady Panthers. 124 to play in the second quarter. Pinchin. Ball at the top of the key. Sends a pass onto the right side with Carr. Carr dribbling into the paint. Finds Pinchin in the right corner. Pump fakes before driving on the baseline. Spins towards center of the lane. Working against Premier. Puts a shot up. It won't go, but she will be fouled. So far, been pretty clean game for both sides. Panthers with two fouls in that first quarter. Garden City with three, and both teams with two in the second. Pinchin yet to miss at the charity stripe. Perfect three of threes thus far. And make that four of four. She's up to six points. As we get a substitution for Great Ben. Paige Thexton, Emily Hall step on. Kenzie Premier and Denver Ringo will check out. 
pinching at the line for her second shot in the right hand. She puts it up and it goes in. 107 to play in the first half. Dexton has it, gets passed on the left side to Spray. Spray driving into the lane. Euro step, gets the layup. Sadie Spray. Sadie saw a sliver of space and exploited it into the paint. A 30 to 12 lead for Great Bend. 50 seconds to play in the first half. Yegas signaling for the offense at the top of the key. She'll now drive onto the right wing, hands it off to Pinch and nearly poked away. Instead, Pinch and able to recover her handle, driving towards the baseline, will spin, turns around over Spray, doesn't get it off front of the iron. And the rebound will be fouled around, but will eventually go out on Garden. Addie Nicholson now throwing the ball in from the bit baseline. 30 seconds to play in quarter number two. Hall has it just in front of half court, moves a pass into the high post to Spray, falling down, knocks it outside to Nicholson. Addy passes on to the right side where McCulley gets it. Now top of the key is with Spray. Spray on to the right side with Alyssa. Alyssa dribbles into the right corner before throwing it up top to Thexton. Thexton down the left wing with Spray. 12 seconds to play in the first half. Hall has it in the left corner. Up top now to Sadie. Ball in the left hand. Seven seconds. Drives in. Charity stripe jumper. No good. On the rebound, it's Carr going the opposite way. Two seconds. Puts the shot. And does not get it to go. So... Headed into yeah, halftime, Raven Lady Panthers a big lead, 30 to 12. Stick around as we'll have your Stone Sand Company and Stone Waste Management halftime show coming up next here on B104.3 The Point, powered by U.S. Chevrolet. Together, let's draw. For new construction, remodeling, renovating, to roofing, concrete, and more. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Great High School Paw Shop is now open for business. And they will open again during the halftime of the boys' basketball game. Make sure to stop in and see all the Panther apparel and browse our large selection of Panther merchandise. We offer regional prices and wonderful customer service. Also, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to get your ticket for the half court shot. Tonight's jackpot is worth $700. Tickets are two bucks. Tonight's sponsor is Dr. Patrick Stang and Brentwood Builders.
has Great Bend leading 30 to 12. And on the inbounds pass, Paige Thexton will knock it out of bounds on the far sideline. It'll take one second off the clock before Garden City has the ball back. Say Jacob Miller talking to the referees. Maybe he wants something called on the inbounds. Instead, Buffalo's will move it in. It finds Camden Carr. She moves it up top now to Pynchon. Pynchon driving to the charity stripe. Spins inside. Gets a left-handed shot to fall. That's the skill Gary takes on. Quick move from Pynchon. Has the first points of the second half. As now Reimer has at the top of the key for the Panthers. Great bet up 30-14. to 14, Seven and a half minutes to go in quarter number three. Down low, Emily Hall has it. Gives it a power dribble over the hoop that time on the shot. Too strong as Garden City will come away with it. It's Haley Brown moving into the top of the key with Camden Carr. Carr dribbling to her left for reverses course to the top of the point. Then hands it off to Martinez. Martinez has it poked away by Spray before Premier comes down with it. Gets it in transition to Reimer. Reimer moving on the right side. Can't get the layup to go. Thexton. Oh, had it for a second, but knocked it into the hands of Haley Brown instead. And so now Pynchon will move it across half court. Gets it into the left corner with Carr. Carr at the top of the key will nearly lose that as Martinez gets it for the Buffaloes instead. Being guarded by Spray, she drives into the left high post, puts a shot up, and that one falls for the Buffaloes as well. Quick start for Garden City, but Great Bend still leads 30-16 to in the third quarter. And a shot, no good, but rebounded by Kenzie Premer. Gets out of Sadie Spray at half court before now Sadie moves it to Reimer. Reimer back up top with Spray. Spray onto the right side for three. That one falls. First bucket of the Burr. half for Great Ben. It's Sadie a big Spray. one for Sadie Spray as it gets them back and go and get a timeout called. As we'll go ahead and take one with them. Stick around. More Panther basketball. Head your way on B1043 the point. Powered by Euler Chevrolet. Together, let's drive. We all love a relaxing vacation. Fortunately, all-inclusive doesn't have to end at the resort. Get Nextech's gig internet that comes all-inclusive with a free router, installation, and more. All for just $69 per month. Visit nexttech.com slash greatbend to sign up. Brain your ankle? Might need stitches? Experts at the University of Kansas Health System's Convenient Care Walk-In Clinic at St. Rose Medical Pavilion can treat your minor issues and illnesses. Open 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. weekdays and 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. weekends to care for you. No appointment necessary. Welcome back into Panther Basketball. Sadie Spray with it at the top of the key. We'll now move it on the right side with Keegan and Reimer. Reimer goes right back over to Sadie. Moves in the left low post with Hall. Hall on the right side. A jumper from Kenzie Premer. No good. Rebound goes long before Reimer comes away with it. Julian moves on to the left wing where Thexton comes away. Now has it. Move to Reimer on the right side who goes into the corner with Creamer. Creamer up top of the key with Spray. Spray drives into the left side of the lane. The left hand is good from Sadie. Sadie with 18. Spray. As driving onto the left side is Camden Carr. Nearly loses it instead. Gets away to KJ Pynchon. Pynchon top of the key pass onto the right side. Finds Martinez who dribbles in just outside the charity stripe. Her shot goes down. That's good. Panthers lead 35-18, 5.23 to play in the third quarter. Sadie Spray has it on the left side. She'll dribble a little further along the perimeter before going down low to Emily Hall. Hall goes on the right side with Thexton. Thexton over into the corner finds Spray. Spray on the charity straight with Emily. Emily on the right block with Thexton. Thexton right corner finds Premier. Premier goes into the mid post with Hall who gets the jumper to fall. Panthers up 37-18, under five minutes to go in the third quarter. Camden Carr driving onto the right side of the lane. Great defense from Julian Reimer and Paige Thexton. Offensive board finds Martinez, though, as she'll put it up and get the second chance points. Great defense from two Panthers, however, no rebound. It gets an easy look at the bucket for Garden City. Thexton now has it in the left corner, moves it up top for Spray. Spray goes to the left high post and rolls. It's a jumper from Sadie, eight feet, no good. Rebound to pinch it. Pynchon now moving along the far sideline. Picked up by Kenzie Premer across half court. Standing on the right wing now. She'll drill to the top of the key. Moves a pass behind her to Camden Carr. Carr pulls up for a three. Guarded by Reimer. No good off back iron. Rebound knocked away by Hall. Instead, Carr comes away with it. 
She'll swing a pass into the post or into the corner. It's Brown. Brown swings it across to the left side. So the floater for Martinez. No good. Emily Hall on the board. Sadie Spray now with it in transition. A three-on-two for the Panthers as Sadie will drive into the middle of the lane. Pull up for six. Gets it to fall. Just the right amount of touches. It bounces off back iron. Sadie's got 20 in the third quarter. Panthers lead 39 to 20. And an inbounds pass nearly stolen a half court by the Panthers. Instead, Haley Brown with the ball moving down low with Mariah Martinez. She'll lose her handle, however. Garden City. Alex will retain possession to get a substitution. Denver Ringo and Alyssa McCulley on for Julian Reimer and Paige Thext. And 3.45 to play in the third quarter. Great Bend leads 39-20. to 20. No fouls so far in this period for either side as Camden Carr has the ball outside the three-point line. Guarded by Sadie Spray. She'll now reverse course onto the right side. The Panthers zone defense working tonight as... Villegas has it near the Panther head at half court. She'll direct traffic. Dribbling to her right. Moves a pass. That side is stripped away by Premier. Moves it to transition to Sadie Spray. Spray off the left side. Pump fakes. Gets the defender in the air. Can't get the layup. Instead, Premier gets the offensive board. Kenzie trying to go with it. Can't get that shot to go. And Denver Ringo gets possession but forces into a jump ball. Sadie Spray got the Defender Viegas in the air just couldn't get the layup on the other end. Now inbounds pass looking for spray. Instead finds Hall and Emily gets it to go. Not quite the way Coach Beck threw it up. And Sadie just kind of tipped it. Didn't clean to get the inbounds pass. However, Emily was there ready. And Premier gets a steal down low. Can't get the bucket to go, but she's fouled. It wasn't on the inbounds pass. It was on the ensuing one. Kenzie was able to just get in the pocket. Of Haley Brown and strip that one away. Can't get the layup on the right block. Fouled instead by KJ Pynchon. First foul in this quarter on either side puts Premer at the line. No good that time from Kenzie. 12 of 21 from the charity stripe is Kenzie just under 60%. We'll see what she can do with shot number two. In the right hand and up and on the way. No good off front of the iron. Pension gets the board. First empty trip of the night for the Panthers at the charity stripe. Shooting a five of eight. The three from Pension at the top of the key goes down for guard. Gives Pension 14 as it trims it down to a 16 point lead for Great Bend. 41 23, 245 to play down low. Stolen away. Pension has it. Moving across half court. She'll Drive onto the right side, spinning near the basket, sends a pass on the left with Maya Korf. Korf dribbling to the corner, sends it up top back to Pynchon. Being guarded by Premer, who's looking for somewhere to go, will swing it on the left side with Carr. It's Carr working against Sadie Spray. Two girls who aren't very easy to get by on the defensive end. Maya Korf dribbles into the charity stripe, sends a pass on the right side with Pynchon. Pynchon fakes left, drives right, loses the handle. Oh, but she'll be fouled. It'll be headed to the baseline. It'll be going against Sadie Spray. Just her first. That's the first foul against Great Bend in this quarter. With two minutes and 12 seconds to go, we'll get a timeout called by head coach of the Garden City Buffaloes, Jacob Miller. We'll go ahead and keep it here. That way I can remind everyone that Panther basketball tonight is brought to you in part by Advanced Truck and Diesel. Farmers Bank and Trust, and by your local Great Bend Pizza Huts. Or I guess that should be local Great Bend Pizza Hut. Some habits die hard. 2-12 left to go, left to go in the third quarter. Panthers lead 41 to 23. Sadie Spray, 20 points in this ball game, puts her over 1,021 points in her Great Bend High School career. As also. As Great Bend also getting nine points from Emily Hall, four in this third quarter. The Garden City offense, though, coming alive after a second quarter, saw them score just seven points already with nine, or excuse me, 11 in this third quarter. 41 23 advantage of four. Great Bend, 2 10 still to play in quarter number three. Pitching. Has it at the top of the key. Swings a pass on the left side. Carr being guarded by Spray. She'll drill to the top of the key. Just dishes a pass into the high post with McDonald. McDonald in the right corner. Finds Core for three. No good. Rebound batted out. Last touched by Alyssa McCulley. 
And so with under two minutes to go, the Buffaloes will throw it in from the left side of the bucket. Carr has it. And on the, will be going against Kaylee McDonald. Just her first, the second on Garden City in this third quarter. Premier at the line. First shot. That one is good. Already looking a little better than the first trip for Kenzie earlier, going 0 for 2. So far, 1 of 1. We'll see if she can't get the back end of the free throw trip as, oh, that one hits off near, that one hits off near iron. Going the other way with it. Garden City trying to find a pass onto the base line to McDonald. Instead, it soars over the head of the freshman point guard and goes out of bounds on the baseline. Pinchin looking down low with the pass. Instead, Panthers take over, leading 42-23, 135 still to play in the third quarter. Primo get it into McCulley. But a press from Garden will not affect the Panthers as they move it across half court. Sadie Spray with it on the near side, dribbling to the top of the key. She'll send an overhead pass to McCulley. McCulley goes into the left high post with Hall. Hall on the right side with Premier. Premier pump face, finds some space in the short corner and sinks one. The pump face cleared the space as it got McDonald into the air and Premier just stepped in for the 16-foot jumper from the short corner. Panthers lead 44-23, 105 to go in the third quarter. Viegas left side driving in onto the right. Moves the pass to Korf in the corner. Korf driving to the top of the key against Ringo. Will reverse direction going to the right now. Since the pass to Villegas. Villegas drives into the paint. Moves the pass left side three for McDonald. No good off right iron. McCulley with the board for Great Bend. 46 seconds now to go in the third quarter. Alyssa pass across half court to Sadie Spray. Sadie on the right side. Nearly has it poked away. Instead finds Emily Hall. Emily 17 footer. Oh no good. Offensive board. Nearly pulled down by Kenzie Premer and Denver Ringo. Instead, will be batted away to Maya Korf. Korf pass on the far sideline is hit out of bounds. It'll be last touched by Great Bend. As we'll see a substitution move in for Great Bend. Julian Reimer and Kenzie Premer going to come. Or Julian Reimer and Paige Thexton stepping onto the court. Kenzie Premer and Denver Ringo stepping off. Garden City, Pynchon has it, the charity stripe, Reimer nearly stripped it away, Pynchon jumper no good anyway, off back, Iron Hall gets the board, it's 15 seconds to play in the third quarter as Sadie has it, moves on to Julian on the right side, Julian back up top to spray, spray out left wing three from McCulley, no good, six seconds to play and Pynchon has it at half court, three seconds, a long three from Pynchon, no good, and so headed into our final frame, Panthers lead 44 to 23. When we come back, we'll have the final quarter of the Lady Panthers game, followed by the homecoming coordination here at Great Bend High. Stick around on B1043 the point. More Panther basketball heading your way. Powered by Ely Chevrolet. Together, let's try. Fellas on number 12, KJ Pinchon, first second. 
Gardens first team foul in the fourth quarter. They're shooting two for the Panthers. Sadie Spratt. Sadie Spray, her second. Panthers, first team foul. Shooting two for Garden City, Maya Court. Sexton on the rebound, under seven and a half minutes to play in the ball game as Emily Hall moves the ball across half court. Sexton gets it on the right side before going up top with Sadie Spray. Sadie gives the ball a dribble before sending a pass to Kenzie Premer on the right wing. Kenzie advances it further into the corner before sending a pass in the post. Too high for Emily Hall. Viegas comes away with it for Garden City on the far side. She'll be picked up by Sadie Spray. Viegas now. Drives onto the right side of the lane. Was a pass outside to Martinez. Martinez does the same. And don't know who she was looking for there on the baseline. But Panthers come away with it. 6.50 now to play in the fourth quarter. Great Bend up 46-24. As Spray has it up top. It's now moved on to the end of the post with Paul. Ball knocked away as she's trying to swing it across. But it's Premer comes away with a steal in transition. Now... Kenzie moves it outside, left wing to Spray, who will dribble near the point. Moves a pass onto the right wing with Kenzie Premier. Premier up top now to Sadie. Sadie on the left side with McCulley into the corner. It's Thexton. Thexton up top for Spray. A three, no good. Looked like it was on the money just a little short that time. As Coming up with it for Garden City, it's Maya Korf. And on the right side, now she'll get to Viegas. Viegas drives in and is fouled. She'll be Heading to the line, a chance for two. So, last quarter didn't, had, didn't reach three fouls in the frame until there were two minutes to go. This time, less than two minutes into the fourth, already three fouls, two on Great Bend, one on Garden City. The foul going against Sadie Spray as she's able to, or as Villegas, I should say, is able to sink that one. Paige Thexton will now step off for a breather as Denver Ringo moves on. Vegas at the line for her second attempt. That one bounces off front iron. And now under six minutes to go. Great Bend leads a 46 to 25. Across half court, Emily Hall has it. She'll dart a pass in the left corner. Alyssa McCauley for three. No good that time. Denver Ringo on the offensive board and gets the put back. Was too strong for McCulley, but Denver Ringo was right there on the low right side. Gets the board and puts it quickly back up. Gets an easy two points for Great Bend. Going the opposite way with it for Garden. It'll be lost by Villegas, however, last touched by a Panther. Haley Brown will move on to the court for Garden City as Alexis Villegas steps off. The pass from Brown, finds its way into McDonald. McDonald driving on the left side, nearly loses the handle, instead moves it outside. At the top of the key, it's with Pynchon now after spending some time and bouncing around the right wing. Pynchon will move it back onto that side, being guarded by Premer, drives right before driving to the back left at the top. 
Entry pass picked off by McCauley. Stripped that one away from Alexa Escobedo. As the clock ticks down towards five minutes left to play, Panthers lead 48-25. At the top, it's Sadie Spray moves into the corner with Kenzie Premer. Back to Sadie up top on the left side. It's McCulley who gets called for the travel. And Paige Thexton and Addie Nicholson swapping in for Emily Hall and Alyssa McCulley. 4.54 now to play as Panthers up 48-25. Moving across half court for Garden City, it's Maya Korf. At the top of the key, she'll be guarded by Sadie Spray. Moves the pass into the right corner, finds McDonald, then hands it off to Pynchon on the right perimeter. Pynchon dribbles on to the left side, trying to find a lane to the basket, but Kenzie Primer making it hard. Instead, she'll pass it off now to Brown on the left block. No good, guarded by Fex, and who comes away with the board. Sadie Spray with it across half court. Waves the Addie Nicholson to come to the top of the key before dishing a pass off to the left side to Addie. Addie goes into the high post with Ringo, who then goes down low to Thexton. Page gets knocked a little bit, but waves it off, says she's fine. And so Gray Ben will be throwing it in from the baseline. Kenzie Premier finds Addie Nicholson in the far corner. Nicholson driving into the high post. Can't quite get a pass cleanly. The Premier in the corner. It's taken away by Escobedo. Escobedo finds Pynchon in transition. Across half court, the sophomore has it. Driving into the right side. Sends a pass onto the right corner with McDonald. McDonald gives to Escobedo, who then goes into the left corner with Brown. A legal screen. Alexa, or Alexa Escobedo. The second against Escobedo, second against Garden City in the quarter. She's called for an illegal screen earlier as well. As with 3.45 to play in our final frame, Panthers lead a 48 to 25. Nicholson has it on the left side. She'll go up top to Spray. Spray on the charity stripe with Ringo. Ringo looking to go on the left block to Fex, and instead it's knocked out of bounds. Possession stays with Great Ben. I'd like to remind everyone that Panther basketball tonight is brought to you in part by SJ Trucking, the 10th Street Eye Care Center, Next Tech, and by Delgado's Mexican Restaurant. Premier has the ball on the left baseline. She'll swing it out. Onto the corner now for Spray on the inbounds pass. Spray finds Kenzie back on the right side. Then ball swings its way on the left with Nicholson. Some good perimeter ball moving for Gray Ben. Gets the ball into the hands of Paige Thexton in the right corner. Thexton sends the ball up top with Spray. Spray driving into the paint left side. Pump fakes before moving across. High post right shot from Premer. Up and down. 50 to 25 advantage now for Gray Ben. Three minutes still to go in the game. And we get a time out called. We'll take one with them. Stick around on B1043 to point as we'll have more Panther basketball heading your way right after this on B1043 the point powered by Ealer Chevrolet. Three minutes to go in the final frame. Panthers lead 50 25. Do you need.
number three, Paige Dexton, her first. Panthers, third team foul. Substitution for the Panthers, number 22, Samantha Mayers. Panther faithful as the 2.15 remaining in the ball game. Great Bend Lady Panthers lead 50 to 25. A shot from the right side, no good from Garden City. Pension grabs the long rebound. However, she's tied up by Paige Vexton. Possession arrow goes to the Lady Panthers. 2.10 is still to go in the ball game. Sadie Spray moves across half court for Great Bend as they'll be looking to choose some clock. Paige Thexton has ball on the right corner, moves it under the high post with Spray. Spray onto the right wing with Premier before she gives it right back to Sadie. It finds its way back to Kenzie before working its way into the right corner with Paige Thexton. Thexton loses it. It's Haley Brown coming away with the steal and Paige trying to get it back will be called for the shove. 1.45 to play in the ball game. Panthers with 14 fouls in the ball game now for Great Bend. We see Samantha Mayers as Paige Thexton also checking in. Sadie Spray will step off. Jillian Reimer also going to move on as Kenzie Premier steps off. And so after that flurry of substitutions, the squad Cindy Beck, Cindy Beck has out there is Paige Thexton, Addie Nicholson, Alyssa McCulley, Jillian Reimer, and Samantha Mayers. A minute and 35 seconds to play. Panthers up 50 to 25. It's Martinez with the ball on the right wing. It's now given to Villegas, who has it dribbling to the top of the key. She'll move it past the pension on the right side. Dri dribbling to the baseline. She'll swing a pass outside. It's a three for Martinez in the right corner. Mayers tips the rebound up, and Thexton nearly comes away with it. Instead, it'll be batted out of bounds. Last touch by Haley Brown of Garden City. And another big swap here for Gray Bend as we see Ava Gregg check on, also on the floor for the Panthers. Jordan Harbaugh, Catherine Mazouk, and rounding out the lineup, Alex Mayers. A fun little duo on the floor for Great Ben, Alex and Samantha Mayers. Samantha, a senior, Alex, just a freshman. Fun opportunity for those two girls to get a share of the court here this season. A minute and ten or minute to go in the ball game. Pynchon has it at the charity stripe. She'll give it up outside it finds Haley Brown Brown goes to Vegas Vegas on the left side a three-pointer no good from a Camden Carr and Greg will have it in transition oh she'll have it poked away instead it goes to Haley Brown Brown inside to Martinez who gets a layup to go on the right side it bounced past Stone again that time from Vegas as the second group from that time Mariah Martinez runs in and Muggs, Catherine Mazouk. Mazouk in the Great Bend Lady Panthers JV game against the Buffaloes tonight. She was finding her range at one point in the second quarter, scoring eight straight points for the Lady Panthers. 34.6 to go in the varsity game here for Great Bend as the inbounds pass will go from Ava Gregg trying to find Alex Mayers. Instead, it'll be kicked out of bounds by Haley Brown. Greg is still going to be throwing it in for Great Bend as she'll get into Harbaugh. Harbaugh trying to break the double team instead will be fouled. Foul going against Mariah Martinez, the second against her. One away from the bonus is Great Bend. Panthers able to cleanly get the inbounds into Mayers. That's Alex Mayers, but she has it stolen away by Haley Brown. Down low, the Shot from Haley Brown, or excuse me, that's Camden Carr, as she is fouled while putting it up, and so she'll be headed to the line. Great bend up 50 to 29, 24 seconds to play. Camden Carr shot up and no good off back iron. Panthers sit on a 21 point lead on a 22 point night from Sadie Spray as the second shot up and bounces off front iron then back then rolls in for Camden Carter to get a timeout called Garden by Garden City 
down 20 points, 24 seconds to go. We'll get a full timeout call from Jacob Miller in his first or in his second year as head coach of the Lady Buffaloes was able to double their win total from three to six last year, currently sitting at seven and seven. However, well on their way to seven and eight are the Garden City Buffaloes as the Panthers lead 50 to 30 in the fourth quarter, 24 and a half seconds to go. A big scoring night from Sadie Spray, 22 points. Also in the scoring column for Great Bend with a nine points apiece, it's Emily Hall and Kenzie Creamer. Both pretty effective nights. Both or uh, Emily Hall scored five in the first half. Kenzie with four, then flipped those totals in the second. Alyssa McCauley was able to come away with six points for Great Bend as Paige Bexton added two. Then Ringo also adding two points from the field as Great Bend again gonna be moving to 12 and five on the year after three straight years at seven and 14 for this Lady Panther squad. An incredible turnaround, fun to watch, especially fun to watch when they can get in transition. We'll see what the Panther transition or the Panther inbound has in store as Jordan Harbaugh throwing it in, able to get it now to Catherine Mazouk. Mazouk goes down low to Harbaugh and she is swarmed. And so we'll see Jordan Harbaugh heading to the line. 50 to 30 point lead for Great Bend. 21.7 seconds to go. But, you know, Tracy McGrady could pull off something this crazy. It could probably be done. And so at the line for Jordan Harbaugh, the shot no good that time for the Panthers. Second shot now coming from Harbaugh. Oh, that one just in and out. And so less than 20 seconds to play. Carr has it on the left wing. Driving onto the right side now, looking for baseline. She'll be guarded by Alex Mayers and will give the ball away on the left side. Stripped away down low. Alex comes away with it. It was poked away by Samantha Mayers and Alex comes away with a steal. As the clock will Yo, run out, we end the game. Panthers win a 50 to 30. Stick around as we'll have post game coverage on the People's Bank and Trust post game show where relationships matter. Here on B1043, the point where Great Bend basketball is powered by Ewa Chevrolet. Together, let's drive. Even the cleanest homes and offices struggle with mold and mildew growing in the ducts of their heating and AC systems. Magna Dry Cleaning Services in Great Bend offers complete air duct cleaning. Find out more. Stop by their new location at 18th and Main in Great Bend. The future is bright. See it clearly with the help of the 10th Street Eye Care Center. Dr. Russell McCauley, Dr. Chad Premer, Dr. Nicole Miller, and Dr. Sarah Steeter are ready to help you. The 10th Street Eye Care Center on the sunny side of the Vision Corner, 10th and Washington, Great Bend. The trouble with the future is that it keeps getting closer and closer. It is important to begin to... Ladies and gentlemen, please be patient as we wait for a couple of the girls to get ready for the winter homecoming court. You still have time to get your rotary jackpot half court shot ticket. Tonight's jackpot is worth $700. Tickets are $2. Substitutes or sponsors this evening are Dr. Patrick Stang and Brentwood Builders. Also, ladies and gentlemen, the Panther Paw Shop will be open during the halftime of the boys' game. Make sure to stop in and check out all the Panther merchandise.
Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we will introduce the 24, 2024 Winter Homecoming Court. Your 2024 Winter Homecoming candidates are Kyler Harris and Melina Carvajal. Melina is the daughter of Magdalena Carvajal. Melina is a member of Debate and Forensics. She is involved in theater and is the Drama Club Vice President. Melina's most memorable moment was her sophomore year when she and her dramatic duo partner placed second in state and went on to the national competition. Kyler is the son of Jennifer and Ryan Rudell. Kyler is involved in theater and is a member of Drama Club and JAG. For Kyler, his best memory was last fall when he had to cover a part in the play with only a day and a half to learn all the lines before opening night. Ladies and gentlemen, Malia Carvajal and Kyler Harris. Your next King and Queen candidates are Caden Hoffman and Harley Doherty. Harley is the daughter of Stacy Doherty and Terry Doherty. She is a member of KX Pep Club and Random Acts of Kindness Club. Harley is a four-year member of the Panther Volleyball Team. Harley will always remember when they had a Connect Christmas party, they found Mrs. Moore in the corner of the classroom and chucked marshmallows at her. Caden is the son of April Hoffman. He is a junior Rotarian. He played football and wrestles for the Panthers. Caden's most memorable moment was a freshman year when Dion spiked his phone in the locker room after getting voted out in the game Among Us. Ladies and gentlemen, Harley Doherty and Caden Hoffman. Our next candidate is Jorge Pena and Daisy Gomez. Daisy is the daughter of Michelle Cavender and Juan Gomez. She is a member of JAG. She wrestles and runs track for the Panthers. Daisy says her best memory has not happened yet, but it will when she wins the 2024 130-pound state wrestling championship later this month. Jorge is the son of Jorge Pena and Socio Rodriguez. Jorge is a member of the National Honor Society and is the vice president of the HOSA Club. He is a member of the football and track team. His most memorable moment was playing his first season of football this year as a senior and sacking the quarterback for the very first time. Ladies and gentlemen, Daisy Gomez and Jorge Pena. Also representing the senior class are King and Queen candidates Diego Sanchez and Sadie Spray. Sadie is the daughter of Chris and Julie Spray. She is a member of KX RAC National Honor Society and serves as the president of the Pep Club. She plays volleyball, basketball, and runs track for the Panthers. Sadie's favorite time is when the basketball team made the championship game of the mid-season tournament her sophomore year. Coach Beck came into the locker room a little excited and sprayed the team with water. <laughs> Diego is the son of Myra and Daniel Sanchez. He is a member of Rock Club, K, and National Honor Society. He also played soccer for the Panthers. His best memory was senior night in soccer season when they wore the pink shirts and he was able to finish the season with his brothers that he started with. Although they lost, the crowd was supportive and he was alongside the people he grew up with. Ladies and gentlemen, Shady Spray and Diego Sanchez. Your final King and Queen candidates are Maddox Spray and Paige Bexton. <laughs> Paige is the daughter of Chris and Rachel Bexton. She is a member of KX, RAP, Zero Reasons Why, National Honor Society, 
and president of the student council. Paige plays volleyball, basketball, and softball for the Panthers. Paige's favorite memory are from softball season last year when she hit her first home run of the season. The bus had to swerve to disappear and then a car rear-ended the bus. She had never seen Coach Benton move so fast. Maddox is the son of Chris and Julie Spray. He is a member of Rat Club in K's. Maddox plays football, basketball, and runs track. His best, best memory was at Washburn Team football camp when they had a food fight in the dorm and he got hit in the head with an Oreo cookie. Ladies and gentlemen, Paige Sexton and Maddox Spray. Please welcome our reigning king and queen, Angel Palacio and Ellison Summers. Angel is attending Barton County Community College and studying medical lab technology. Ellison is also attending K-State University and majoring in dietetics and nutritional sciences. Yours truly, Gifted Flower Shop, has generously donated the flowers for our homecoming attendance. Don't forget to shop local this Valentine's Day. Let's give it up one more time for your candidates, Paige Sexton and Maddox Spray, Sadie Spray and Diego Sanchez, Daisy Gomez and Jorge Pena, Holly Berry and Dayton Hoffman, Melina Carvajal and Kyler Harris. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2024 Winter Homecoming King is... Diego Sanchez! And now, ladies and gentlemen, your 2024 Winter Homecoming Queen is... Daisy! Congratulations to all of your Winter Homecoming candidates!
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Great Men High School Gymnasium. For tonight's game, featuring the Buffaloes from Garden City High School and your Great Men Panthers! The Great Men High School Athletic Department would like to thank you for supporting the Panthers tonight through your attendance. We appreciate your encouragement and support of all our players, coaches, and officials. For the safety of all fans, we expect all students and spectators to sit in the bleachers and watch the game.
this time, please stand, remove your hats, and place your hand over your heart, and join the Great Bend High School Acapella Choir under the direction of Ms. Susan Stambaugh as we honor America and all of our veterans and military personnel serving around the world with the National Anthem. Starters this evening, for Roman C, Henry Leo, Raul Munoz. And for your great big Panthers, at guard is 6 2 senior, number 10, Max Faye. For Roman C, number 3, Brady Burns. And for the Panthers, at guard is 6 1 senior, number 12, Parker Dix! Eleven City, number five, Emilio Zunt. And for the Panthers, at post, a 6'6", six, six, sophomore, number 14, holy cow! It's Ian Kramer! Eleven City, number 10, Daniel. Right. And for the Panthers, at forward, a six foot sophomore, number 15, Jacob Hall. At the Dodger City, number 20, Thomas Lundgren. And for the Panthers, at guard, a six foot senior, number 24, Coaches this evening for Garden City, Luke Sweetberg, and for the Panthers, Kyle Green. Your officials this evening, Max Ferguson, Justin Schooner, and Eric Geisinger. a career high night where he scored 17 points against Dodge City. He actually set a career high against a liberal in the game before that with 12. So don't be surprised if you see Jacob Hall putting up some big scoring numbers tonight for the Panthers. Browning out the starting lineups for Great Bend. Of course, it's Carter Combs, the six-foot senior, comes in shooting 41% from behind the arc. Good for seven points per game, two assists. Coming off a game against Dodge where he dished out six dimes to his teammates. Panthers in their home whites, red numerals trimmed in black. Garden City, the gray roads with the gold numerals and black trim. Panthers win the tip, and tonight's opening possession is brought to you by Barton Community College. Explore your future at Barton. Panthers have the ball in their far corner. It's Maddox Spray. 
He'll now dish it, trying to dish it inside, and it'll instead be picked off. Gardner has it going the other way. Munoz driving on the right side, moves a pass in the right corner. Burns has it, driving to the rim. He'll be fouled, can't make the bucket, but will be heading to the stripe. And early two free throws for Garden City. Just the first of the game, however, 21 seconds in. Panthers will want to be playing a little bit cleaner. The foul going against Maddox Spray. Burns at the line for the first trips of the evening for Garden City, and he makes the first. 45% shooter from the free throw line. Let's see what Burns has on attempt number two. He's able to sink that one as well. Gives Garden a 2-0 lead early in this ball game, 2 or 7.35. Still to play in the first quarter. Parker Dix with the ball at the top of the key. He'll drive left in the paint. Moves it to Carter Combs in the left corner. Combs drives baseline. Loses the handle. It'll be last touch by Daniel Menares. And so Gray Bend will be throwing it in from the left side beneath the basket. Or I guess a little bit further out on the baseline. Probably about halfway between sideline and the bucket down low, Ian, or excuse me, Jacob Hall gets it off the feed from Combs and goes strong up and gets fouled with the bucket. Combs threw it in from that left side and found Hall on the left block. A power dribble across the lane, finds Jacob open on the right, goes up the right hand, catches the physical contact and can't sink the free throw. The rebound going to be knocked out by Garden, or excuse me, by great bend as Garden will take over possession. It's a tie ball game. Two to two. Less than a minute into this one. Garden has it going into their offensive end. It's with Brody Burns at the top of the key. He'll put the ball in the right hand and send a pass that way as well. It's Emilio Zunt driving against Ian Premier. Puts it up on the left side. High shot off the glass. No good. Maddox Spray has the rebound going the other way for great bend. It's Carter Combs moves into the corner with Parker Dix. Parker step back three. Oh no good. Bounces off the iron and Ian Premier scrapping for it will be called for the foul. Just his first of the game, the second against the team in the first quarter. 6.50 to play in quarter number one. Tie ball game two to two. Zunt moves a pass on to the left side, finds his way to Munoz. Being guarded by Combs, he'll send a pass up top now to Longa. Longa trying to find Zunt. Picked off by Premier. Ian in transition. Eye on the rim. Goes up. Dunks it with two hands. Sweet rim off the music for Ian Premier. Gives Great Ben a 4-2 lead. He's on Emilio Zunt. Zunt swings it on the right side. It's Raul Munoz driving on the left block. Puts a shot up over Hall. Gets it to go. Just the right amount of touch that time from Zunt. And Maddox Spray has it in the right corner. He'll drive in. Pump fake. Double clutch. In the air. Gets the bucket to go. Spray gets the layup. And it's a 6-4 to four advantage now for Great Bend. Driving. The shot no good. That time from Sun. Panthers on the board. Premier gets it out in transition. Spray on the right side. Layup is good from Maddox. Couple of quick transition buckets. Has Great Bend out in front. 8-4 to four against Garden City. 5.45 still to play in our opening frame. On the right side, it's Burns. Drives into the lane. Now will hand it off to Menares. Menares working against Parker. Digs down low. Tries to put up a scooping shot. Great defense from Parker. Hall comes away with it. Ian, another chance at the rim. That one's good, too. Ian, no regard for the rim. Doesn't care if he's going to break it. He slams it down hard. We get a timeout called. It'll be a 30-second one. We'll send it away with them. Stick around. More Panther basketball coming your way on B104.3. The point powered by Ewan Chevrolet. Together, let's drive. Scott's Welding has new owners. Same great hardworking people, same great service at the same place. Fully insured, certified welders with 24-hour service. David and Shelley Frederick are the new owners of Scott's Welding and proud to help sponsor this Great Ben High School Panther broadcast. Keller Real Estate and Insurance Agency is proud to support this Panther broadcast. If you're looking for residential, commercial, or farm properties, turn to Keller Real Estate and Insurance Agency, 1101 Williams in Great Bend. the point where with five and a half minutes to go in the first quarter, Gray Ben leads 10-4. to four. The Panthers on an 8-2 to two run right now and on the defensive end, Daxton Minton picking up the foul. 
Great Ben does have three fouls less than three minutes into the game. Each one going to a different Panther. Throwing it in on the Great Ben side. It'll be Emilio Zond. He sends a pass in the backcourt that is nearly not pulled down by Raul Munoz. Just able to get in front of the baseline. And so Munoz comes across half court, drives onto the right side of the lane against Combs and gets the bucket to fall. Combs now has it going in the offensive end for Great Ben. Ball in the right hand. He'll be moving that way and send a pass to the opposite side with Matt with Maddox Spray on the left wing. Maddox drives into the paint. Shot tipped away as he's trying to go up with it. Zunt gets it fi following the other way of four. Garden puts up a three and sinks that one on the right side. So a quick couple of points for Garden City as it shrunk to a one-point lead for Great Ben, 10 to 9, as Mitten with a we get a timeout call from Coach Cree. We'll see what he wants to do. We'll stick around here this time around as there'll be a 30-second timeout. I'd like to remind everyone that Panther basketball is great for all to you by Equity Bank. More than 40 locations throughout Kansas, including Great Bend, Larned, Nashville, and St. John. EquityBank.com. Imagine Coach Cree not too happy with the uh, defense going on that time as a couple of quick buckets from Garden City shrunk it down after the Panthers went on a 10-2 lead to bring it to a or an 8-2 lead, excuse me, to bring it to a 10-2 game. Garden now going on a 7-0 run, 10-9, 4-42, still to, still to play in our opening frame. A full house tonight at the Panther Fieldhouse as Daxton Minton will be throwing it in in front of the Panther student section. He'll get it in to Cooper Omont, subbed in at the break for Carter Combs. Omont will be setting up at the top of the key. He'll find Jacob Hall in the right high post. Hall moving into the low. He'll be fouled. Can't get the shot to go, but does draw the contact. Going against Colton Davis. A big senior center down low for Garden. So getting him some foul trouble. Probably not going to hurt anything in the later goings. Jacob Hall at the line. First shot. That one's money. Hall missed his first attempt at the line on an and one attempt earlier in this game. Corrects the mistake this time, so he's one and two. Let's see what the third attempt has in store. That one sinks as well. Moves Jake to four points now in the game. Great Ben back out to a three-point, 12 to nine lead. Four and a half minutes still to play in quarter number one. Munoz has it on the right side. He'll dribble to the top of the key and send a pass to Burns on the left. Burns dribbles to the charity stripe, hands it off up top to Zunt, being guarded by Min. He'll send the pass on the right side with Burns. Burns working inside against Omai. He'll put the shot up over Cooper. No good. Rebound goes to Maddox Spray. Now Maddox gives it to Daxton across half court on the near side. He has it stripped away by Zunt. However, Emilio can't control the momentum, and he'll go out of bounds in front of the near sideline. Min will be throwing the ball in, and he'll dart it to the top of the key with Ian Premier. Ian slashes to the right side, puts up a floater. No good off the backboard. Offensive rebound knocked up by Hall. Instead, pulled down by Longa. Zunt now has it dribbling to the left side. He'll be picked up by Min, drives into the lane, and gets the shot to fall. Emilio Zunt, seven points as sends it on to the right corner. That's with Omont. Omont up top to Hall. A pump fake. Drives inside against Longa. Nearly loses it. Instead goes down low. Omont gets the bucket to fall. Nice quick twitch pass there from Jacob Hall. Finds Omont in perfect position below the bucket. No hesitation from the young freshman. He puts it up. A three-point, 14 to 11 lead for Great Ben. Three and a half minutes still to play. Daxon Minton comes away with a steal on Raul Munoz. Full court pass, not on the money that time to Ian Creamer. Well, that one, he wasn't throwing it from the opposite baseline. If he would have been out of bounds on the opposite baseline, it would have been on the money that time. Just a little, a li a little too strong as it goes out of bounds on the baseline. Garden City will take over possession. 3-10 remaining in the first quarter. Panthers lead by 3, 14 to 11. A pass from Brody Burns from the right wing. Trying to find a streaking. Emilio Zunt is too far. Goes out of bounds on the baseline. Panthers get possession now. It's back-to-back -back turnovers for each squad. Results in great bend. Moving it across half court in the hands of Daxton Min. Min hands off in the right corner. to Maddox Spray who dribbles to the top of the key. He gives it now to Ian Premier. Ian jabs steps left before swinging a pass to Daxton on the right wing. Daxton pump fakes, drives into the high post. Sends a pass to Ian in the left corner. Ian now back up top with Daxton. 
Mitten dribbles to the right before sending a pass to Maddox Gray. Spray dribbles in, pulls up the mid-range jumper. No good. Long on the rebound. He'll dish it over to Davis, who gets it quickly to Zunt. Zunt in the left corner. It's with Rosales. And Rosales baseline drive. Trying to get a skip pass into the right corner to Burns. Instead, tipped out by Gray. Or excuse me, a foul. The second going against Maddox Gray, fourth against the Panthers in this quarter. A couple substitutions as Maddox and Cooper Omont step off. Ben Nicholson, Carter Combs stepping on for Great Ben. The inbounds pass from the baseline finds Davis on the right side as he's able to sneak by Ian Creamer. Davis the first points of the game. Gets it to a 14 to 13 lead for Great Ben. Carter Combs has it across half court. Moves it on the left side with Hall. Hall dribbling to the point. Will now swing a pass on the left corner with Nicholson. Nicholson sends it back onto the left wing with Hall while we get a foul called away from the bucket. A second one going against Colton Davis. So two already on the 6'5 senior center for the Buffaloes. 2'15 still to play in the quarter number one. On the inbounds pass, Ian Premer has it. Pump face doesn't get the shot to go, but Ben Nicholson on the quick put back. So Ian couldn't quite find the mark on the inbounds play as he got the bucket on the right block. However, Ben Nicholson Ready in position for the offensive putback. Great Ben leads 16 to 13. Going the other way is Rosales. He has it, will now hand it off to Davis. Davis dribbles to the top of the key, now gives it to Burns, driving into the left side of the paint. He'll dish a pass into the corner. Rosales, guarded by Combs, launches the pass high, nearly floated out of bounds. Instead, Burns comes down with it, drives to the paint, moves the corner to Colt Davis, right corner three, no good. Rebound hauled in long by Hall. 140 still to go in quarter number one. A Hall has on the left side. Dishes it down low to Mitten. Mitten gets the defender in the air. Draws the contact and gets the shot to go. Great awareness that time from Daxton as he could feel the defender. Dallas Rosales in his hip pocket. Pump fakes him and get him in the air. Then leads into the contact. Gets the bucket to go and a shot. A three-point play if Daxton can hit some free throws. I'll be honest, man. A defensive specialist, not the strongest at the free throw line so far this year. Let's see what the young Panther has in store. This attempt. That one goes in off the back iron. The now 3 of 11 at the line is a mitten as Panthers lead 19 to 13. Sun drives inside, coming to a stop on a dime, frees him up in space, and he's able to make the shot. It's Emilio Zun with 11 now as Carter Combs moves across half court. Dax and Mitten with the ball on the left side. Sends it to Ian Creamer in the corner. Creamer up top to Ben Nicholson. Nicholson keeps it swinging onto the right wing with Mitten. Mitten finds Combs up top who nearly loses his dribble. Instead recovers it on the left perimeter. Being guarded by Zun to send a pass up top to Ben Nicholson. Nicholson keeps it moving to Ian Creamer. Creamer back to Combs. Combs on to Nicholson. Three-pointer from the left corner. In and out. Under a minute to play now, Panthers lead 19 of 15. Emilio Sun has it top of the key, driving to his left side, being guarded by Daxton. He'll drive, right, drive, jab right, then drive left, loses the handle, however, recovered by Burns in the left corner. Now goes back to Sun on the left lane drive. He'll be fouled that time going against Daxton. Mitten. It'll be the second against Daxton, the fifth against the Panthers. And so under 44 seconds to go in the second, or in the first quarter, excuse me, Panthers have been able to clean it up since picking up three in the first three minutes of this game. Puts Emilio Zunt at the line. Zunt on the year shooting 50%, able to sink this one. Zunt, he's got... Four, or excuse me, 12 in this game so far. 12 of the Garden 16 at the line for the second charity stripe. That one falls as well. It's a 19 to 17 advantage for Gray Ben. 40 seconds to play in our opening frame. Ben Nicholson has it on the right wing. Moves a pass to Carter Combs, top of the key. Combs triple threat drives to the right. Sends a pass into the right corner. Ben Nixon pump face. Then sends it up top. Ian Freeman driving to the paint. Spins left. Finds us cutting Carter. Or excuse me. Finds a cutting Cooper. Oh my. He's able to get the bucket to fall. Cooper slashing on the base. The line gets it to go with the left hand. Back to a 4 point 21 17 lead for the Panthers. 15 seconds still to go in the first quarter. 
clock ticking down as Emilio Zunt has on the left wing, calling for a screen on Carter Cohn. He'll drive from top of the key, put up a three, gets that one to fall. As two seconds on the clock, Ian puts it up from near half court. Oh, doesn't go, had a shot. As we'll head into the second quarter, Panthers lead 21 to 20. Stick around more Panther basketball. Head your way on B1043 the point. Powered by you and Chevrolet. Together, let's drive. Marmy Auto Group, your central and western Kansas dealer, has new and pre-owned vehicles, or we can special order your vehicle today. If your existing vehicle needs serviced, Marmy's Stone Waste Management, Don Pipe Testing, Venture Corporation, and Bugle Dyke Chiropractic, Grant Bend, and St. John. A one-point advantage for Gray Bend at the end of one quarter as Emilio Zunt for, da or for Garden City, excuse me, has 16 points. He finished the Panthers, or the first game against Gray Bend with a 16, so Going to be Paramount trying to limit him the rest of the way. Emilio Zunt has it on the far side. He'll hand it off now to Burns. Burns pass picked off. Ian going the other way. Two-handed slam to start the second quarter for Ian Primer. 23-20 lead, 7.40 still to play. And a charge called against Brody Burns. Couple of... Quick plays for Great Bend. Has him right back with possession here. 19 seconds off the clock in the second quarter. 7.41 still to play in the first half. 23-20 is our score. Panthers lead. Great Bend let Ian Premier run some point forward as he'll bring the ball down the court. Swings the pass onto the right side with Omont now into the corner with Dix. Dix going down low. It'll be to Jacob Hall, but he's fouled by Corbin West. West, another one of those towers that Garden City has down low a 6'7 senior don't seem to mind when him or Colton Davis pick up some fouls on the inbounds Ian Premier gets it moves a pass in the right corner Parker Dix for three and it goes Ian got it in front of the rim and usually that means a tip in for the Panthers instead quick pass finds Parker Dix alone in the corner and he's able to drill it a floating shot no good from Dallas Rosales however the transition pass picked off by Emilio Zunt. It's a 26-22 lead now for Great Bend. And on the right corner, Omont moves it to the top of the key with Premer. Premer's entry pass to Hall picked off. Zunt has it working against Great Bend. He'll drive into the paint, gives it up. Now it's a three from Elite Kinney. Kinney can't hit. It's given to Parker Diggs and picked off by Omont at half court or picked off, excuse me, by Zunt, trying to get it to Omada at half court. Zunt now with 20 of the 24 points for Garden City. A 26 to 24 lead for Great Ben. Omont has it in the left corner. Moves the pass up top now with Hall. Hall pump fakes a three, gives it to Ben Nicholson on the right wing. Ben goes back up top to Jake. Jake, he wants that three-pointer pump fake. I thought he was gonna pull it that time. Defense a little too close, and so we'll hand it to Parker Dix. 6.20 to play in the second quarter. Panthers lead by two, 26-24. Ian Premier in the right high post. Moves a pass outside. Parker Dix, three, no good off back iron. Long rebound will be hauled in. Oh, about across half court by Ian Premier. And so the Garden City Buffaloes will have it after Coach Cree gets a brief discussion with the referee. 6.08 still to go in the second quarter. Zunt with the ball being guarded by Cooper Omont. This Panther assigned trying to slow down Zunt as he'll drive to the left. Panthers pick him up and down low. It opens up Corbin to West and West will be fouled by Premier on the right block as Ian trying to stop the easy look for the 6-7 West. 
City. We'll see what West has at the free throw line. The first one up and no good as it spins out. Keep it at a two point lead for Gray Ben. Under six minutes to go in the first half. West second free throw up and no good either. Off back iron. Ben Nicholson soars into the air for to come down with the board. He'll take it to the left of the bucket and immediately be fouled by Brody Burns. That's Burns' his second for Garden City. And so we see Carter Combs check in for Ben Nicholson. At first I thought Carter Combs was running off the court. And I was like, I didn't realize he was on. But he's subbing in for Ben Nicholson. 5.50 still to play in the second quarter. Jacob Hall has it low on the left block. And he will get the score, but he's called the charge. Is the first going against Jake. A couple of sloppy plays from both sides. It's just turnover after turnover here in the second quarter for both the Panthers and Garden City. Great Bendo leading 26 to 24. Buffalo's ball is in the hands of Dallas Rosales. He'll send it up top. Emilio Zunt dribbling around half court directing offense swings the pass on the left side to Rosales Rosales then goes to Davis Davis moves it back up top to Rosales who swings it on the left side with Zunt Zunt overhead pass in the left corner briefly there with Malik Kenny Kenny goes back up top with Zunt Zunt on the right side finds a driving Rosales Rosales jumper from the baseline is good 5-13 still to play in the first half as Parker Dix has it at the top of the key get the play from Kyle Creek goes in the left high post with Jacob Hall Hall pulls up just behind the charity stripe no good it's knocked out of bounds possession could be staying with great bend as we'll see Isaiah Reed step off Ian Premer moving on to the court for great bend 459 to play in quarter number two Panthers lead or it's a tie ball game 26 26 as Cooper Omont pass from top of the key onto the baseline too much however Parker Dix able to keep it alive goes back on the left wing with Omont jab step right drives into the left gets the floater to fall off the backboard Cooper Omont six points so far in the game 439 still to go in the second quarter Panthers up 28 26 Emilio Zunt, ball, top of the key. Goes into the charity stripe with Davis. Davis onto the right wing with Burns. Burns back up top to Emilio. Being guarded by Parker Dix. He'll dump a pass into the left corner. The drive from Rosales gets it to Long in front of the rim. Longest shot falls. The first points of the bucket or of the game now for Long as it ties it up 28 28. Clock ticking down towards four minutes to go. Half the quarter still to play in quarter number two. Ian in the high and low left block. Down low to o Cooper Omont. Back to back plays where Cooper Omont receives a feed on the baseline, is able to score. He's now tied a career high night that he set in against a Larned. A deep three point shot. No good that time from Colton Davis. Rebound saved by O or saved by. Carter Combs who gets to Omont Cooper gives it right back to Combs driving onto the right side of the lane moves a pass in the right corner fouled on the floor oh unfortunate as he had dished the pass into the corner to Parker Dix that Dix able to drill won't count though as the foul came before the shot it's gonna go against Dallas Rosales oh correction the foul going against Malik Kinney Three thirty-seven to play as the Panthers are inbounding it from the right side of beneath the bucket. They'll send it on to the left side with Jacob Hall, who can't get the shot to go, but is fouled quickly. Think that one. That one time going against Dallas Rosales. It will be his second, fifth team foul for Garden City in this second quarter. Jacob Hall's shot at the line goes. We'll see Ian Premer step out along with Maddox Spray as Isaiah Reed and Cooper Omont check back into the game. Also for Garden City, Daniel Menares stepping on as Dallas Rosales moves off. 
Jacob Hall will be at the charity stripe, his second shot of the attempt, and that one falls. Six points now for Hall as 3.36 still to play in the second quarter. Panthers lead 32-28. Emilio Zunt moving into the offensive end for the Buffaloes. He'll have it to the right at the top of the key. Sends a pass over to Malik Kinney on the left wing. Kinney being guarded by Combs goes into the right corner with Zunt. Pulls from three. No good. Rebound. Pulled down by Colton Davis. And he travels as he's trying to stop the feet from shuffling. Looks like he's upset with the call, but nothing really else that that could be. He was walking around. 3.16 still on the clock in the second quarter. Panthers moving it across half court. Carter Combs sends a pass on the left wing. It's Maddox Spray. Spray advances it right back to Combs further into the left corner. He'll move it along the perimeter to Ben Nicholson who keeps it swinging to Ian Primer on the right side. Primer to the right corner with Maddox Spray. Spray up top now to Carter Combs. Combs puts the ball above his head before he goes into the high post with Hall. Hall rolls from right side to left. Can't get the layup to fall. And Emilio Zunt has it. Now sends it on the left side. Down low it's to Thomas Longa back up with Menares on the left wing. Menares will send the chest pass to Zunt on the right side. Zunt sends it back across to Kinney on the left. Kinney soaring pass picked off by Primer and Ian's transition pass on the floor to able to get it. Quick timeout called by Coach Cree. Ian had it for half a second. Had one hand on the ball and Cree was ready for the timeout. Possession going to stay with Great Bend as we get a 30 second timeout called. We'll take one with them. More Panther basketball heading your way. Powered by U.S. Chevrolet. Together let's drive. Minutes to play in the first half. Great Bend boys lead 32 to 28 against the Garden City Buffaloes. Maddox Spray moves the pass in the left corner. Ian Primer fires for a three. Too strong. However, Spray comes down with the rebound on the right block. While he's trying to establish position, he'll be bumped and jostled a little too much. Daniel Menares picking up the foul. Still move Maddox Spray to the charity stripe. Ball in the right hand, gives it one dribble, does Maddox, and sinks his first shot at the line. Spray, or I should say Maddox, shooting right there at the free throw line with his sister Sadie, both 66% adjacent as Maddox sinks both. I should say both Spray siblings shooting above 66% as both hit just over two-thirds of their attempts at the free throw line. Maddox good on both attempts there, gives him Six points, one of three players with six, one of four with at least six. That's a long shot off the left wing and no good from Menares. Nicholson with the rebound, gets it to Combs, cross half court. Combs floats a pass in the right corner to Hall. Hall drives in, pulls up from 10, no good. Rebound being fought for, it'll be knocked out of bounds by Zunt. Or excuse me, it'll be knocked out of bounds by Great Ben. I believe it was last touch by Cooper Omont. Zunt will be throwing it in for Garden City. Panthers lead 34-28. Less than two minutes to play in the first half. Munoz has it on the right side and moves it further into the right corner with Davis. Davis trying to get it up top. Pass not on mark and it'll go out of bounds on the far sideline. Panthers will retain or will main, regain possession. Get a couple of substitutions as Maddox Spray and Premier step on. Cooper Omont and Isaiah Reed move off. Premier and Spray both with two fouls, so want to keep him off the defensive end with a minute and 40 seconds still to play in the second quarter. Combs has it on the right wing. He'll move it up top now to Hall. Long shot falls for three. 
didn't know if it was going to be for three or two, but Hall had the extra inch he needed as it's a 37 to 28 lead for Great Bend. A Zunt bounce pass finds its way to Marnares, who goes right back outside as Zunt, Zunt on the right wing as he'll swing it out along in the short corner, long up top now to Munoz. Munoz picks up the dribble, swings it onto the right side where Davis gets it. Davis bounces it up top. Finds Munoz driving on the right side of the lane. He'll be picked up by Primer. Able to find baseline though and sends a pass. Picked off by Spray. Panthers in transition. Spray nearly loses the handle. Able to get it away to Hall at half court. On the Nicholson on the left wing for three. No good. Rebound hauled in by Carter Coles. Maddox Spray on the drive. Gets the bucket to go. Carter Coles. You don't usually think of him as a rebounder for Gray Ben, but turns into a quick assist as he finds Maddox Spray wide open streaky to the lane. It's a 39-28 advantage now for Gray Ben. Panthers on a bit of a run now as Emilio Zunt drives into the right high post. Ben Nicholson picks him up, able to knock it away. Zunt loses it instead. It's picked up by Menares of Garden City. Menares goes from right to the left side. Zunt three-pointer. No good in and out. Oh, on the rebound though, Colton Davis. Trying to put it up and over Jacob Hall, and he'll be fouled. Oh, excuse me, the foul going on Maddox Spray. Oh, it was Jacob Hall. So sorry. I was going to be pretty confused how that one went on Spray. I misread the hands of the referee. Don't know what I was seeing. You hear sometimes fans say, refs need to get their eye checked. Broadcast needs to get their eyes checked as the first free throw falls down from Colt Davis. Cuts it down to a 10-point lead for Great Band. 39-29, 16 seconds still to play in the first half. At the line, it's Davis. His second shot falls. He's now... Two for two for the charity stripe. Under 15 seconds to play for Gray Ben in the first half as they have possession. Maddox Spray with it in the left wing. He'll now send it up top. Parker Dix onto the right side with Ian. Ian puts the ball above his head, finds Combs. Opened up top of the key for three. No good off the left side. And it'll go out of bounds. That'll mark the half. Kind of an anticlimactic situation as Carter Combs three went out of bounds. And the clock expired on the way up. Panthers go into the halftime break leading a 39 to 30. Stick around as we'll have your Pete or your Stone Sand Company and Stone Wins. Tonight's half court shooter, Alec Creamer. Come on down, Alec. See what you got, dude. Tonight's halftime performance is brought to you by the Great Bend High School Spirit Squads, Color Guard, Cheer, and Dance Line. Have enjoyed working together the last couple of weeks to bring you this evening's routine. Good luck, performers.
performers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Panther winner drumline will be performing for your halftime entertainment. The winner drumline is made up dedicated students interested in playing drums, several of them several of whom are not traditional percussionists. Some are experienced players, while some are drumming for the first time. They just want to have fun, hitting, shaking, and scraping stuff. The students have worked for several weeks and are here to show off their skills with their performance of Yo Mama is Old School. Members are, on the bass drum, Amy Williams, Reese Grosner, Quentin Heath, Maddie Bonai, on the snare drum, Danica Klein, Reagan Ketch, Kaylee Haig, and Daniel Zamaripa. On the tenor drums, Sheridan Johnson, Benton Jessica, Mirelli Ullman, Caitlin Roddy. On the cymbals, Jacqueline Garcia, and Mackenzie Binky. Sit back and enjoy the performance. Cordal Mamba and Lock and Load.
ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Rotary Half Court Shot featuring Alec Creamer, Mr. Chris Sexton, and Mr. Mark Benjamin back are there to witness history right now. 700 bucks, dude. Good try, Alec. Now it's time for the Athletic Booster Club Pep Fan of the Week. The original was Lauren Davis. Lauren chickened out to shoot this tonight. So shooting for Lauren is Romero Roach. It's getting going, Romero. Look at those rebounding skills by Mr. Thexton.
Company and Stone Waste Management Halftime Show. Is we'll just go ahead and extend it right into the second half now as both sides are ready to go headed into half number two. Like I said, a full house here is the Panther Fieldhouse tonight for a homecoming as Maddox Spray gets the ball in the left wing for Great Bend. Sends it to Parker Diggs in the corner. Entry pass to Premier knocked away. Munoz has it, goes to Long on the left side. Long is layup, no good. Now Parker Dix on the rebound, finds Maddox Spray on the near side. Spray advances into the corner, goes up top now with three on the right wing from Combs. Nothing but net that time. You heard me talking about how he hadn't scored yet, and Combs changes that quickly here in the second half. A quick transition pass, or pass, finds a Thomas Longa down low as he's able to convert the bucket. Combs has it near sideline, trying to find Maddox Spray in front of the Panther bench. He'll be knocked out of bounds by Raul Munoz. Great Bend now up 42 to 32 after the Great Bend trades a three-pointer for a two from Garden on the inbounds in front of the Great Bend bench. Spray finds Combs. Combs goes top of the key to, to Hall. Hall on the left side finds Dix. Dix drives, finds Jacob back in the paint. No good on the shot from Jake, but Ian gets the offensive board going up. He'll be fouled. Couple of attempts that time for Great Bend results in the Panthers getting two free ones at the line, or potentially free ones, I should say, as Ian Premer going to be trying out his luck. The past five games, Ian, a uptick in the free throw percentage as the first one. No good that time from Premer. It's been shooting 58% from the free throw line in the past five games on the year, Ian. Good on about 40% from the line. Second shot at the charity stripe. No good that time as comes up short. The Buffaloes now have it moving the other way. In the left corner is Menares. He'll have his pass picked off down low by Premer. Excellent transition pass. Finds Carter Combs on the offensive end for an easy layup. Kind of a nice little reversal of roles. Instead of Carter feeding Ian, it's Ian helping his point guard out. Getting an easy look at the rim. Panthers lead 44-32, 6.40 still to play in the third quarter. On the left side, it's Munoz. He'll try to drive baseline, be cut off by Combs. So he sends the ball to the top of the key with Burns. Burns passes to the right. It's with Menares being guarded by Parker Diggs. He'll give it up up top to Zunt. Zunt sidearms a pass in the left corner. And as we will drive from Burns, he loses it. It's either Maddox Spray or Jacob a Hall. A little bit of tandem work to come away with the steals for the Panthers. It's now with Carter Combs in the left corner. He'll go down low to Ian Premier and gets the bucket. Like I said, they reversed roles on the last time. So that time Carter Combs says, let me get you one back. Gets an easy feed onto the block where Ian turns, makes it off the glass. Panthers lead 36, or excuse me, 46-32 in the third quarter. Six minutes still to play in our penultimate frame as at the top of the key Burns moves the pass on the left then it goes back up top finds Munoz so far Panthers trying to keep the ball out of the hands of Emilio Zunt and so Menares has it on the lane blocked by Premer Ian going the other way finds Maddox and oh Maddox threw the pass behind Ian but Ian's still able to get the layup to go Maddox had the right idea. It was just a touch late on the execution. However, Ian makes him right on the pass. Zunt drives left side of the lane. No good. However, transition pass knocked away by Thomas Longo. It'll be moved down to Raul Munoz. Munoz driving onto the right wing will pull up against Parker Dix. Sends a pass now into the corner with Burns. Burns moving along the perimeter. Sends a pass to the left side. Menares dribbling to the top of the key. Gives it to Zunt on the right side. Zunt bounces it into the high post where the turnaround jumper from Munoz goes. And a timeout called from Coach Cree. It'll be a full timeout, so we'll go ahead and take one with them. Keep it here on B1043, the point, as we'll have more Panther basketball ahead your way right after this. Five minutes still to go in the third quarter. Panthers lead 48 to 34. We are powered by Ealer Chevrolet. Together, let's drive. Under Brothers Waste is the best. The senior class won in a very tight competition. Congratulations to the seniors.
Combs brought the ball down the court, got an entry pass to Ian, who spun off the right block for the easy layup. Panthers have the ball in their offensive end. It's with Maddox Spray in the near corner. He sends the ball up top to Carter Combs. Combs on the left side finds Dix. Dix drive blocked by Longa Ian Primer at the rebound. As he's trying to put it back up, or I get not while he's trying to put it back up, he'll be a foul on the floor. It's a go against Thomas Longa, his second now in the game. The second against Garden City in this quarter. The inbounds pass from the left side goes to Ian on the left wing. He quickly gives it back to Combs, whose corner three is no good. Hit off the inside of the rim three times as it bounced around before bouncing out. However, the uh, the rebound was knocked out of bounds on the baseline by Garden City. And Combs gets the pass perfectly into Ian Bremer in front of the rim, who tips it in. Ian had six points in the first half. He's got six points in the third quarter now as he's 12 on the night. Four and a half still to play as Zunt drives to the left baseline. Since the pass now outside of the right. It's a Munoz three, no good. Premier gets the rebound, long pass to Spray. Spray off the left side, goes up with the left hand. He's fouled hard. Going against Colton Davis as Spray just pops right back up like nothing happened. Gives the, the chest a quick pound as he looks over to Coach Creel. Ah, I'm good. You know, uh, earlier in the season, Maddox was dealing with a little bit of an ankle injury. You might not have been able to tell because he was still an extremely efficient scorer for the Panthers. Let up a little bit in one of those games, but still a vital presence for the Panthers as the second attempt from Maddox up and also good. Make that a perfect 4 of 4 at the line now for Spray. He's got 10 points on the night. One of four Panther players with either double digit scoring or within one bucket of that mark. That's a Zunt left wing three. That time it hits through the net. That actually the first bucket for Zunt in this second half. He had 20 points in the first half, just three through the first four minutes of the third. We'll see another timeout called. We'll go ahead and take, or actually we'll go ahead and keep it here. That way I can remind everyone that Panther basketball tonight is brought to you in part by the American Plains Co-op, Magna Dry Cleaning Services, Comfort Pro, and by Innovative Livestock Services. It's been a good night for Great Bend so far. Lady Panthers coming off of a 50 to 30 win over Garden City. Great Bend boys lead a 52 to 37 here on homecoming. You know, it's a, a big night. You, can always tell by how packed the field house is and just some of the, the different characters you see out. You know it's going to be a, a good night when you got a guy like Mark Mingen back sitting to your right, a, a staple in the community. A couple other quality great men faithful in the crowd. You can see John a Pike up sitting to the right of me and of course some of the faithful Panther parents sitting across the way. The old reliable sprays, halls, preemers, all at every game, dedicated Panther fans. Now on the defensive, or excuse me, throwing it in on their defensive end, the Panthers get it in the Premier Coast to Coast and the foul. He got the inbounds from Maddox and just immediately set his sights on the rim. He attacks hard, gets the point, or gets the bucket to go and picks up the foul. It's against Thomas Longo, so two quick ones here in about a minute of each other. Moves him now to three fouls, and the charity stripe shot from Ian goes down. Under four minutes to go in the third quarter now as Great Bend leads a 55 to 37. And the shot from Garden City Long as Parker comes away with the board. It'll be knocked away, though, by Colton Davis as he just batted it out of bounds. It goes out on the sideline. So Parker will be throwing it in from just behind the garden bench towards the baseline. Carter Combs receives the inbounds pass and quickly gives it back to Parker. Playing a little bit of catch in the backcourt as Combs will now advance it across half court. Drives into the painted area. Dish it off to Maddox. What a feed from Combs. Wow. Ray, a great finish that time, but I don't think anybody in the gym thought that Carter wasn't going to go up for the layup there. Gets an underhanded pass to Maddox. Easy look at the rim. A 57-37 advantage now for Coach Kreese. Panthers 3-15 still to play in the third quarter. Zunt 
has it. He'll try to drive into the high post. He's cut off. He swings the pass over to Nate Martinez. Martinez goes up top to Rosales. Rosales steps just inside of the charity stripe. No good on the jumper. Rebound goes to Carter Combs. Combs doing a lot of everything for the Panthers right now. Drive it in. Going to be a contact call. Uh, will be a charge called against Combs as he did fly in there. A streak of white from left to right as we'll see Ben Nicholson check in. Parker Dix, he'll step off. Parker helping set up that play for Carter on some back and forth passes in the backcourt. They caught a Garden City defender out of position as a little bit of a reach teach moment. Under three minutes now to play in the third quarter. Panthers lead 57 to 37. Zunt, ball at the top of the key, bounces it to the left, finds Davis, top of the key, gives it right back to Zunt. Ben Nicholson comes away with a steal, overhead pass to Carter Combs. Combs goes up with the right hand layup, easy on the right side. Count that one as an assist for Ben Nicholson as he got the steal and the feed to Combs in transition. Also dealt with a little bit of contact on getting the pass up to Carter. And the turnaround jumper just in front of the charity stripe. Good from Colton Davis. 2.15 now to play in the third quarter. Maddox Spray. And 2.05 now to go in the quarter. A bucket for Maddox Spray. Has the ball on the other end with Garden City. No good. Spray. He's crossed a season high with that last bucket. 14 points it's to Carter Combs now on the right wing. Being guarded by Zunt. Emilio going to try to get the ball away from Combs instead. Carter will get it on the right wing with Hall. Hall skips the pass to the left side. Maddox drives to the baseline. No good. Too strong. Ben Nicholson gets the board. Gives it, oh, gives it a dribble and trying to throw an overhead pass and ends up throwing it into the back and bottom of the backboard. That's what happens when you try to throw an overhead pass and you're down too low and you also happen to be 6-6. It ends up just careening into the backboard. Possession goes over to Garden City. Panthers lead 30 or 61 to 39, excuse me. At the top of the key, it's with Malik Kinney. He'll send a pass now onto the left side where it's Emilio Zunt. Zunt goes back up top now to Davis. Davis keeps the ball moving on the right side with Kinney. Kinney's bounce pass finds Zunt. Zunt skips it from right corner to left. Colton Davis three hits nothing that time as Maddox gets the rebound, saves it in bounds. And a technical. Colton Davis, he's been he's been running his mouth a little bit on a couple of different calls tonight and he'll finally get called for it not quite sure because not gonna lie the, the things he's been upset about haven't necessarily been big questionable calls uh, so it'll put Maddox Spray at the line a chance for two technical free throws uh, one twelve still to play in the third quarter Maddox's first shot is good Brody Burns will sub in for the technical fouling. Colton Davis says, oh, Maddox misses the second one there that would have given him six straight makes at the charity stripe. Instead, now five of six when he moves to the free throw line. A season high in scoring for Maddox, 15 points on the night. Still an entire fourth quarter to play as Great Bend leads 62 to 39. At the top of the key, Premer has it, keeps it moving into the right corner with Ben Nicholson. Nicholson goes back up top as Maddox dribbles to the left wing, pulls up from the jumper, 17 feet, no good. Oh, on the board. It goes to Malik Kinney, and he almost lands on top of teammate Dallas Rosales. Instead, gets called for the travel as he walked with the ball after losing balance. Nice break for Gray Ben as they'll get the ball back. Daxton Minton throwing it in from the right side of the baseline. Sent a long pass to the top of the key with Ian Creamer. Ian drives to his left, looking for space on the left side. Pump face to get Thomas Long in the air and finishes at the rim. 64-39 for Gray Ben. Now Zunt has it at the top of the key. He'll pull up from three. No one near him, but he'll miss. Hits the left of the iron. It's a rebound pulled in by Nicholson across half court. It's moved to Daxton. Min Min gets it to Ian Creamer. Ian in the left high post goes up top with Daxton. Coach Cree wants one shot with 30 seconds still to play in the third quarter. Panthers leading 64 to 39. Dax Daxton finds Maddox Spray in the right corner. Maddox drives, can't get the baseline drive to go through a little bit of contact that time. And you know, Coach Cree had said he wanted the last shot, but he tells Maddox he's not mad at that one. You get a clean look at the rim like that, you got to take it. Might not have the make, 
still a quality shot to be taken here. 22 seconds still to go as Maddox will sub out. We see Cooper Omos step off. Now under 20 seconds to play in the third quarter. It's a three-pointer off the left wing. No good that time from Rosales. He gets his own rebound long and loses the handle. Ian Creamer, no one between him and the rim, goes up. Oh, the back scratching two-hander. He brought it back far behind the rim or behind the head. And a last-second shot from Zunt. No good. Creamer gets a big shoulder bump from Carter Combs as he heads to the sideline after the third quarter with 19 points. Panthers lead 66-39. Don't go anywhere. More Panther basketball is heading your way here on B1043, the point powered by U.S. Chevrolet. Together, let's from new construction, remodeling, renovating, to roofing, concrete, and more. Schrader Homes and Remodeling is ready to go to work for you. They are the one licensed and insured company that can get the job done. Find out more online at SchraderHomes.com and say wow. Proud sponsor of Panther Sports. Plumbing and heating emergencies rarely happen between 9 and 5. That's why the pros at Comfort Pro are available 24-7, 365. Comfort Pro, the area's largest... Bank. No ATM fees nationwide. Learn more at equitybank.com. Garden City has the ball to start the second half and a, le and a drive from the right baseline goes out of bounds. And so Panthers, they get it moving the opposite direction. 15 seconds off the final quarter as Cooper Omont has it on the right wing. Moves the pass up top to Ben Nicholson. Nicholson keeps it swinging on to the left side with Premer. Premer pump face before going back to Ben. Left wing three is good from Ben Nicholson. The scoring bonanza continues for Gray Band to high. Eight Panthers in the scoring column. And a miss, no good from Garden City. Ben skies for the rebound. He's got in transition. Nicholson on the left side finds Omont in the right corner. Omont bobbles the pass a little bit as he gets it now on the left wing with, o with Nicholson. Nicholson moves it into the corner and Ian drives and scores. Will not be denied that time as Nicholson did not hesitate to bounce that one in the left corner where Ian was waiting for it. Ian attacks the rim with the best of them, gets the layup to go there, and he's heading to the line, a chance for a three-point play. Panthers up 71 to 39. Ian's free throw on the way, hits front of the rim, and rolls in. 22 points now for the Panthers sophomores. Great bend up 72-39. Six and a half minutes still to go in the ballgame. Thomas Longo over Ian Premier can't get it. Ben Nicholson on the board. And Nicholson's outlet pass. Batted away by Zun. Zun able to move it out to Kinney. Kinney on the left wing looking for somewhere to go with it. We'll find Zun. Zun pulls up from three from deep. That one goes though. Just the second made shot from Zun in this second half. Albeit both of them threes coming from deep. He does have 26, however, he had 20 in the first half, just six now for about 10 minutes in the second half. It's just under five minutes to play in the fourth quarter. Down low, Creamer has it on the left block. However, he'll be fouled before he takes the shot up. It'll be going against Emilio Zunt. It's just the first one against Zunt in this ball game as he's been an incredible player for Garden City this year average 16 points per game in January, averaging 13 on the year, along with five assists and two steals for the Buffaloes. However, Panthers 
thrown it in from the left of the bucket. Daxton Min will move to Cooper Oman in the corner now. Min gets it back. Working on the left block. Puts a shot up and he's fouled. Nearly gets a wild circus shot to go. Instead, he'll just be heading to the line and a chance for two free throws. And we have reached that magical number, folks. You love to see it on homecoming. Panthers up by 30. It's a running clock in the fourth for Great Bend on their homecoming night. Not a bad way to ring in. A good home stand for the Panthers. The first free throw misses from Daxton. Men now one of two at the line. Panthers, though, just getting all sorts of scoring from so many different players. Eight Panthers have made it into the scoring column as Men sinks the second charity stripe shot. He's up to four points now. With under four and a half to play on the right side, Dallas Rosales gets it swung to the left where Malik Kinney has it. Kinney moves to the top of the key, goes back onto the right side, pass nearly picked off by Ben Nicholson instead of a three-pointer from Zunt, hauled in by Isaiah Reed. Reed moves to Nicholson across half court. Ben finds Min driving onto the right side of the lane. Min goes up, has the shot blocked. Knocked down by Nate Martinez. And then as the Buffaloes were getting in transition, Isaiah Reed with a foul. So that'll get a inbound pass from Garden City on the near sideline on the baseline. It's a drive from Daxton Min. Or excuse me, not Daxton Min as he was on the coverage. The drive coming from Sun on the outlet pass to Nate Martinez. Martinez on the shot. Three and a half minutes now to play in the game. Panthers lead 73 to 44. Cooper Oma trying to find Ben Nicholson down low on the right low block. Instead, it'll be knocked away and we'll have a jump ball called. As we see a conversation between Coach Cree and Cooper Oma. Oma had the ball in the right corner and tried to go down low to Ben Nicholson. Coach Cree told Oma, I would have shot it. Big substitution coming in for Great Ben as we see Carson Kern get in. The 5'10", a senior, hasn't been able to play basketball after some injuries kept him out for the first three years of his career. But Coach Cree can't say enough about the kind of kid that Kern is. The exact type of player you'll want to have on your bench. Fun to watch as he really sets the energy tone for the entire bench as a three-pointer falls from the left corner for Malik Kinney. Kern, though, he's gotten some time and made the most of it in a couple of these games. Got a couple of buckets. The first one coming against Larn before scoring a more against TMP. Also been a quality rebounder as Kern with the ball at the top of the key. He'll drive to the right side, find Omont on the right corner. Omont bounces the pass to Reed, and Reed scores! That was the one player we were really waiting on to get in the scoring column. Now all nine of the Panthers who typically get time to have a score. Let's see if we can't get Carson Kern a little bit and some points to every Panthers main appearance. Get some points. It's at the top of the key. It's with Dallas Rosales. He'll move into the high post. He finds Giovanni Baires. And Baires able to make a inside shot while being fouled. The foul will Go against Carson Kern. It puts Corbin West at the line. And even though he makes it, it won't count as we have a free throw line violation or a lane violation on the charity stripe as mid lane fell in before the shot was complete. Panthers lead 75 to 49 in the fourth in the fourth quarter and the shot is up and good from Cooper Omont it's now 10 point game from Omont the assist from Isaiah Reed is he gives a little nod and we see a three pointer go in from Malik Kinney he's got eight all coming in the second half 45 seconds and the Great Ben Panthers lead 77 to 52 Ben Nicholson on the drive from the right baseline he's whacked and so He'll be ahead to the line and we get a, some free throws coming from the charity stripe. 
And we're going to have a technical foul after a Garden City player bounced the ball too hard. I believe the conversation is being had for Carson Curran to take those. So the first penalty, or the first foul, excuse me, is going to be for Ben Nicholson coming at the line on the drive. And so Ben, he drove in, didn't make the bucket, gets fouled. He's going to the line for two. That's what we know for certain. Nicholson at the line, a first shot. Bounces high up the back iron before falling down. One shot now on the way for Ben. And that one, no good. And so the technical foul will be coming on the way, and it will be Carson Curran taking the shot. He's got two attempts on the technical. Let's see what the Panther Senior has. First one, oh, no good. A little hard, a little hard, a little to the right. Attempt number two on the way. Kern at the line. Oh, that one no good either. Oh, he gives a shrug and a smile, and the clock will expire as the Great Bend Panthers redeem their one-point loss in Garden City with a 77-52 blowout of the Buffaloes here on home to the Great Bend. The ground on B104 through the point as we'll have more Panther basketball head your way, powered by you and Chevrolet. Together, let's drive. Hazmat Response, West 10th Great Bend provides hazardous emergency response service throughout the Midwest. When you have an emergency, you want to know that help is on the way. Now, Hazmat Response provides that assurance, and they're proud to sponsor this Panther broadcast. School officials would like to thank you for attending tonight's game. As you depart the gymnasium, please use caution. We would like to wish.